Well, hey there, kiddos. This is your video on identifying functions, but before we jump to the video, this is a shout out to my newest subscriber on my channel, Leroy Jenkins. You know who you are. So let's talk about identifying functions. What is a function, first of all? We have to talk about that. So you have these two graphs at the very top of your page. You've got a V and an E. You're going to have to make a prediction really quick which one you think is a function and which one's not. It's just a prediction. So pause your video for like three seconds, make a prediction and write it down and then come right back. So hopefully you've made your prediction, you've decided whether that V or that E is a function and you've written it down and I'm going to tell you that the correct answer is that the V is a function and we're going to talk about why as we walk through this but we've got definitions first. So the first definition we have to deal with is this thing called a relation. All a relation is, is just a set of ordered pairs. Like you will see down below on question number one and question number two, those ordered pairs are just listed out. That's a relation. A function is a relation where each x is paired with only one y. and I'm squishing up. So a relation is a set of ordered pairs. A function is a relation where each x value is paired with only one y value. So every single x is paired with a different number. If that doesn't happen, then what you have is not a function. A vertical line test, we're not going to write the definition down, we're just going to talk about it. A vertical line test is just a test we use to determine whether or not the graph of something is a function. And we're going to practice it so you'll see it in action. So down here on question one and two, the first thing I want you to do is I need you to scratch through this word function and not a function because they don't belong there and they're causing a problem. So number one, you have a list of ordered pairs. We've got a relation and there are going to be several things we do with this relation. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to take those values that are listed in that set of ordered pairs and we're going to fill in the table. So I'm just going to put them in there. So I have 0, negative 1. I have 0, 1, 2, 2, 3, 4, and 4, 0. And then we're going to take those points that we just put into our table that we have in our relation, we're going to put them on that graph. So we're just going to go ahead and plot them. So I have 0, negative 1. I have 0, 1. I have 2, 2. I have 3, 4. And I have 4, 0. So I have all these points, they're listed, now they're on my table. So now I've got to do this thing with these ovals. This is called a mapping, and it's exactly what it sounds like. It's a map. What do maps do? Maps give you directions. They tell you how to get from point A to point B. They show you how different areas of a city or a town or a state or a country are connected. And so that's what's going to happen. We're going to use this mapping. That's really bad. We're going to use this mapping to show how our x's are paired with our y's. And so to do this, we've got to list our x and our y values into the, the ovals. There's rules though. When you put the x values and the y values into the little ovals, you're going to list them in order from least to greatest, and you're going to not list anything that, re that is repeated. So for example, on my domain, the smallest value I have is, or in my x values, the smallest value I have is a zero, and it's there twice, but I'm only going to write it once in the map, because there's no reason to write it twice. Then I'm going to put the rest in order, so I have two, three, and four. And then on my y values, I'm going to also list them in order least to greatest, so the smallest one's negative one, then zero, then one, two, and four. And after that, I'm going to draw arrows or lines showing how the x values are connected to the y values. So I can see in my table that 0 and negative 1 are connected. I can also see that 0 and positive 1 are connected. So I'm going to stop right there. 
Our definition of a function is a relation where each x is paired with only one y. If you look at what we have happening here, here in this table right here, this x value zero is paired with two different y's. It's paired with a negative one and a positive one. You can see it very clearly in the map. If you look on the map, that zero has two lines leaving from it which means that that zero is paired with more than one number. That violates our definition of a function because the x is not paired with only one y. So this right here that we're dealing with is not a function. It said that it was, it was lying. It's not a function. So let's finish our map. We know that two is paired with two, three is paired with four, and this four is paired with zero. And so now I can see how everything is related and I can tell just by looking at that mapping whether or not I have a function because of that zero being paired with more than one number. And that's only true for the x values though. Y values can be paired with as many x's as you want it to be paired with. The x's are the ones that have to be paired with only one y. So they have, they can't repeat themselves. So now you have this pretty little graph. Let's talk about the vertical line test. Vertical line test says, if you put a vertical line anywhere on the graph you have created, if it ever passes through the graph at more than one point, then you do not have a function. And so what is that is saying is, if I were to draw a vertical line right here through that point that I drew on my graph, it only goes through one point. So, so far I'm good. If I draw a vertical line here, it still also passes through only one point. Here, it just passes through one point. But if I draw a vertical line here, it passes through two points because that right there is that x value that was paired with two different y values. It makes them line up vertically and when they line up vertically, you have something that's not a function. And so when you, you can use your pencil and dra drag it across your graph and see, does it ever touch it more than once? You can use your finger. You can use the edge of a piece of paper. You can do what I did and just draw vertical lines. But if there is any vertical line that ever touches a point, a, a place on the graph in more than one point, then you don't have a function. So let's do number two over here. We're going to put those values in the table. So we're going to list them first, two, five, 3, negative 2, 4, 3, 5, 1, and 6, 3. And then we're going to plot them and make a graph. So I have 2, 5, 3, negative 2, 4, 3, 5, 1, and 6, 3. And then we're going to put them in our mapping. Remember least to greatest, so x's are here, y's are here. That's a y, not an x. That looks ugly. Let's try again. Okay, and I'm going to list them in order least to greatest. So my x values already are 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. No repeaters. I didn't have to worry about that. In the y column, the smallest one's negative 2, then 1. Then the three, it shows up twice, we write it once, and then five. And then we'll map them. Two goes with five, three goes with negative two, four goes with three, five goes with one, and six goes with three. And so you will notice in the X bubble, every single number only has an arrow one time. So they are each paired with only one value of Y. Now, there is a value of y that has two x values that go to it, but that's cool, as long as the x value doesn't go to two different y values. This also passes the vertical line test. So if I go put vertical lines on here, it passes through one point, one point, one point, only one point, and only one point. And it doesn't matter which vertical line you use, none of them pass through more than one point, so it passes your vertical line test. So this one, whoops is a function. So now let's talk about it in terms of equations and some word problems. Let's look at the next slide. So number three here, is about the volume of a sphere. So it says the volume of a sphere is the product of 4 thirds pi and the cube of the radius. First thing I need to do is write that as an equation. So the volume is the product. Well, that means multiply. 
So it's 4 thirds pi times the radius cubed. And so what they're asking you is, is this a function or not? Well, what they are asking is, can I plug a number in here to r cubed and get an answer? And then can I plug that same number in and get a different answer? So let's just say that the radius of my sphere was 1. If I plugged that in, I would get 4 thirds pi times 1, because 1 cubed is just 1, which is just 4 thirds pi. So if I plug in 1 for the radius, I get 4 thirds pi as my volume. If I then go again and plug 1 back in for my radius, and I do it a second time, would I get a different answer? There's no way you would get a different answer because I haven't changed anything. My equation is the same, and when I plug the same number back in, I will get the same answer back out. So since there is no way to plug a number in and get a different answer, this, so I can plug in one and get an answer. If I plug in one again, I get the same answer. There's no way that I'm gonna plug in one one time and get 4 thirds pi and then plug one in a second time and get eight. That won't happen. The equation hasn't changed and nothing has changed, so yes, this will be a function. If I graph it, every x value will be paired with only one y value. It's an equation, nothing fancy is changing. Number four though, says each day the local weather station records the high temperature for the day and the amount of rainfall in inches. So if I have a table, temperature and rainfall. So let's say day one, it's the middle of July. It's 101 degrees, and we have zero inches of rainfall. Day two, it's 101 degrees, but today it rained, and we got one inch of rainfall. Now you can see that I have two x values that are paired with two, or one x value that are paired with two different y values. So I've got this number, 101, that's paired with a zero and with a one. So this means this cannot be a function because I have values that will repeat and will be paired with another number. So number five, your friend has a part-time job assembling bicycles for a local store. Each day he earns $20 plus $15 for each bike he assembled. Well, let's just see. On day one, let's say your friend built two bikes. So he made $20 plus 15 for each bike. So 15 times two is 30. So he made 50 bucks. In order for this to not be a function, on day two, if he made two bikes, he would have to make a different amount. So let's see, on day two he made $20, he built two bikes, 15 times two is 30, that's still gonna be $50. As long as my equation remains the same, 20 plus 15x, I'm always gonna have a function because there's no way I can plug in a, the same number and get a different answer. So if it's an equation, you're gonna have a function. This doesn't have an equation associated with it. It's just we're comparing the temperature to rainfall. It's possible for the temperature to not change, but for the rainfall to change. And so then you have repeated values in the X column with different values in the Y column. So now let's talk about this graph. There is a point missing from the graph of the relation below. The relation is not a function, which means that X values will line up vertically. We want to know which point is missing, so let's just plot them and see. So A is 0, 0, and if you look at that point, it does not line up vertically with anything. If I draw a vertical line through it right here, it's the only point there, so that's not the answer. So then 1, 1, 1, 1. If I draw a vertical line there, it passes through two points, my point and then the point that was already on the graph. So it's, I'm pretty sure that's the answer, but let's just make sure. I have negative 1. 2, and if I draw a vertical line there, it only passes through my one point, so it's not that one. And then I have 2, negative 2, which is down here, and if I draw a vertical line there, it also only passes through two points, so that's not it. That's going to be the one that makes it not a function, because of this right here. took everything off because of right here when I put this point on here and I drew my vertical line it passed through two different points that's why this one makes it not a function and the rest are 
So that's how to identify a function. Vertical line test to make sure each x value is paired with only one y value so you don't have any repeated values of x with different values of y. That's how you determine if something's a function. So we'll practice this tomorrow when you guys come to class and I will see you then.